Hello everybody, this video will be on the magnetic flux and magnetic flux density. It's quite important to understand the differences between magnetic flux and magnetic flux density. Magnetic flux is defined as the total amount of magnetic field going through a certain area of a conductor. It can be also defined as a total number of magnetic field lines passing through the given area. Magnetic flux is measured in the SI unit of Weber or WB for short. On the other hand, magnetic flux density is a measurement of the density of the field lines in the given area, rather than the total number of the field lines. The word density refers to how closely are the field lines orientated together. Magnetic flux density is more commonly referred to as the magnitude or the strength of the magnetic field. And this is often represented by the symbol B and measured by the SR unit of Teslas. Sometimes this can also be measured in Weber's per meter squared. The two diagrams at the bottom of the screen will give you a better understanding of the difference between the two terms. In the first pair of examples, the two given areas have the same number of magnetic flux, but each is provided by different flux densities. In the first square, this has a lower density because the four field lines are further apart. Whereas in the second square, this has a higher density because the field lines are closer together. So these two areas, although they experience the same flux, they actually have different flux densities. In contrast, in the second pair of example, the two areas have the same flux density because the field lines are spaced apart by the same distance, but they experience different amount of magnetic flux. In the first one, there's a greater amount of flux as compared to a small amount of flux in the second area. The magnitude of magnetic flux in more detail can be given by the equation phi equals to b times by a or b a cosine theta. The Greek symbol phi is what we use to represent magnetic flux. b is the strength or the magnitude of the magnetic field. And this is also, of course, the flux density. A is the area of the conductor that the flux lines are passing through, and theta refers to the angle between the magnetic field lines and the normal that's drawn from the plane of the area. Maximum flux passing through a given area will occur when the magnetic field lines is perpendicular to the plane of the conductor. As discussed before, the angle theta in the equation phi equals to b a cosine theta refers to the angle between the direction of the magnetic field and the normal that's drawn from the plane of the conductor. If the field lines is parallel to the normal, the theta will be zero and cosine zero degrees will give you a maximum value of one for the cosine function. And this is when we have maximum flux going through the area. Now, it's important to notice that when the field lines are parallel to the normal or when the theta is zero degrees, the field lines are actually perpendicular to the plane of the area of the conductor. In the third example, when the field lines are perpendicular to the normal, the angle theta in the equation becomes 90 degrees. And cosine 90 degrees gives us a value of zero and this is why there will be zero amount of flux passing through the area, despite the fact that the conductor is inside a magnetic field. When the field lines are perpendicular to normal, notice again how they are actually parallel to the plane of the conductor or the area. So in summary, the orientation or the angle between the magnetic field lines and the area of the conductor that we are examining is quite important in determining how much magnetic flux is actually passing through that certain area. This diagram will help you understand the relationship between flux and the other variables shown by the equation. In the first diagram, we have two metal loops of the same area. However, in the second example, we have a higher flux density or higher magnitude of magnetic field. By having a higher density, the amount of magnetic flux increases. As B increases, the value of phi or flux will also increase. 
In the second example, the flux density remains the same for both conductors, and so does the area. However, the orientation of the conductor is different, and that changes the angle between the normal of the circular loop and the direction of the magnetic field. Remember that the angle theta is defined as the angle between the normal of the surface and the magnetic field lines, so that's this angle here. And for the second conductor, the angle is between the normal here and the direction of the magnetic field. So the angle here is zero degrees because the normal in blue is parallel to the direction of the red field lines. So the flux varies depending on how the surface of the conductor is orientated or is facing with respect to the direction of the magnetic field. In the third example, the flux density is kept the same and the angle or the orientation of the loop is also kept unchanged. However, the area of the loop is different between the two examples. On the one on the right hand side, we have a greatly increased area. And by having a larger area, we can allow more magnetic flux lines to pass the conductor. And as a result, the value of flux also increases. This concludes the video on magnetic flux and flux density.